Operating a single action revolver takes some finesse, but yet requires some authority. To load the Uberti 1875 Outlaw in 9mm flavoring, first point the muzzle in a safe direction. Pull the hammer back to the half cock position. Open the loading gate. Insert one round into a chamber. This is the load one part of the rhyme. Rotate the cylinder to the right until the next empty chamber is showing. This chamber is to remain empty. This is the skip one part of the rhyme. Continue to rotate the cylinder to the next third chamber. Load the third chamber and then each of the next chambers so that you have loaded four consecutive chambers. This is the load four more step. Close the loading gate. This is the close the door part of the rhyme. Place the thumb of the shooting or support hand directly on top of the hammer spur. While holding down on the hammer spur, press the trigger. The hammer will release. Use pressure on the hammer to slowly allow it to go forward into its rest position. The revolver is now in a safe attitude. While decocking the revolver has been somewhat covered, I'll cover it specifically in detail next. Of course, we are assuming that the revolver is fully cocked. While the safest time to decock a single action revolver, or a double action revolver that is in single action mode, is when the chambers are empty, or after all rounds have been fired. But we all know that sometimes the hammer must be lowered on a live round. This is where I insert a warning. Make sure your hands and fingers are dry, and such things as gloves or bandages do not prevent you from maintaining a firm grip on the hammer. First, make sure the muzzle of the firearm is pointing in a safe direction. Then, pull the hammer back slightly from the full cock position, and, while maintaining a firm rearward pressure on the hammer spur with your thumb, carefully pull the trigger and maintain trigger pressure so that the hammer can continue to move slowly more forward past the half cock loading position. While you can use the cowboy method of decocking the hammer, I find it safer to use the thumb of the support hand to support the hammer, simply for the fact that it keeps the hand away from the flash cap or anywhere forward of the flash cap. This may not be as cool as using the cowboy method, but it is safer. Once clear of the half cock position, which is approximately one half inch between the frame and the hammer, carefully release the pressure on the trigger and continue to slowly move the hammer forward until it clicks into the quarter cock position, approximately one quarter inch between the frame and the hammer. Note that you will not hear a click as the hammer moves through the half cock loading or unloading position. If you somehow stop the hammer at the half cock notch position, you must pull the hammer to the rear again to engage the full cock notch. Then repeat the decocking process. Never attempt to pull the trigger when the revolver is in the half cock position for the reason mentioned previously. Damage to the revolver could occur. As a side note, whenever I am showing a single action revolver to someone after ensuring that it is cleared and safe, I always ask them if they are familiar with these old style single action revolvers. I always tell them to decock the hammer using the thumb to prevent the hammer from falling on an empty chamber, because they, invariably, cock the hammer and pull the trigger, or try to pull the trigger from the half cock position. Just protecting my investment, that's all, nothing personal. To safely unload, move the hammer to the rear to the half cock loading position and open the loading gate fully. Use the left hand to support the firearm. Using the right hand on the ejector rod located under the barrel, push or pull the rod toward the cylinder to push the live cartridge or empty case out of the chamber and through the open loading gate. Allow the ejection rod to return to its normal position. Rotate the cylinder to see the next chamber. 
and push or pull the ejection rod again to empty that chamber. Continue this process until all chambers are empty. You must operate the ejector rod its full length in each chamber to ensure complete cartridge ejection. Once each chamber has been unloaded, slowly rotate the cylinder one more complete revolution. Take care to ensure each of the six chambers are now completely empty. Then, and only then, should you close the loading gate. Then pull the hammer completely to the rear to the full cock position and decock the revolver using the instructions that I went through previously. While I did not expect issues during the range session, the second of two issues, which I talked about in the maintenance segment, need to be addressed. The second issue that has occurred, even in modern 9mm revolvers using moon clips or not, is bullet setback of cartridges remaining in the cylinder. This bullet setback, caused by recoil of the rounds being fired, increases case pressure of the rounds not yet fired. In most cases, the setback is not significant enough to warrant concern, but does exist to one degree or another when firing a rimless cartridge in a revolver. Uberity firearms are tested at three times the established case pressure of ammunition, so I doubt if there would be any issues with the firearms. With that said, I would not explore putting 9mm plus P ammunition through this revolver due to the increased case pressures of those rounds, but that is just me. With all this said, let's catch up with how the Uberity 1875 Remington and I are working together at the range.